Have you ever wondered what it means to be the Alpha and the Omega? Such a grand power that includes the beginning and the end of everything. Who is this figure and what does it reveal about our own destiny? In this video, we will uncover the relationship of God with Alpha and Omega and what it can mean for your life today. The story of Alpha and Omega. The Bible teaches us that God's ways are different from ours. His greatness is infinite and his thoughts are higher than ours. He does what he desires and does not need to answer to anyone. The Bible also asks us, who are you to question God? Psalm 103 verse 19 says that the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. This means exactly that his kingdom rules over everything. Nothing is outside God's control. If something were, he would not be God of that thing. So everything without exception is under his dominion, whether it is the smallest atom, the greatest nation, or the most significant event. Matthew 25 verse 32 describes a great future event. All nations will be gathered before God and he will separate them as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. He will have total control over that day. Ephesians 1 verse 11 states that God works all things according to his will. He has complete control over everything everywhere at all times. Nothing surprises him. Everything that happens is under his control. He controls nature. Some may see the universe as a clock that God winds up and lets run on its own, but that is not the case. The Bible shows that God acts consistently. That's why people observe that when something falls, it falls at a certain speed and light travels at a certain speed. This gives us the laws of the universe, such as gravity and aerodynamics. In fact, everything we observe are the actions of God. Sometimes he acts differently and people call this a miracle. In reality, it is not a miracle, but an extraordinary act of providence. This means that God is acting differently from usual, and people think that the laws of nature have been broken. In truth, they have not. It is simply God acting in a different way. Psalm 147 verses 15 to 18 supports this idea. This psalm speaks about God's power over nature. He sends his commands to the earth, and his words run swiftly. He gives snow like wool. This verse shows that God forms the snow with a direct command. He scatters frost like ashes. He casts out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. So we have frost, hail, and in other psalms we see lightning, ice, the wind blowing God is in command of all this. Everything happens by his word. This makes nature very exciting. When we go out into the world, we see God in action. God also has the power to control all the creatures of this world. He is sovereign over all animals, whether in the sky, on the earth, or in the sea. A perfect example of this is the story of Jonah. He tried to flee from God, but God sent a great wind, again showing his power over nature. The sailors threw Jonah into the sea, but God prepared a fish to save him. This demonstrates God's control over creatures. Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Even the smallest bird that falls to the ground is under God's control, an event that may seem insignificant to us but is in God's hands. God not only controls nature and creatures, but also the events of life. An example is the story of Joseph. His brothers, out of jealousy, threw him into a pit to die, but then sold him as a slave in Egypt. We know Joseph's journey. He went to Potiphar's house, then to prison, and there he met people who helped him become the second most powerful man in Egypt after Pharaoh. During the seven years of famine, he stored grain, and when the famine came, he released that grain to save his people, including his brothers. When Joseph's father died, his brothers feared that he would seek revenge. Genesis 50 verse 20 says, Joseph spoke to his brothers, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Joseph's brothers were evil and had malicious intentions. God does not know evil or malice, but he is sovereign and so wonderful that he has perfect control, even when people do their worst. 
I want to share other versions of this verse. You intended to harm me, but God turned it into good. God has a plan for your life, even when friends, enemies, and even family conspire against you. He turns what was meant to harm you into something good. See, the evil of Joseph's brothers in selling him to Egypt was actually the means by which God saved them from certain death. We, as humans, can only see the present, but God sees 5, 10, 20 years ahead. We underestimate how calculating and methodical God is. God is in control and His plan is still unfolding. Nothing is delayed or postponed. God has everything in His hands. Every situation is in God's hands. The Bible presents this great truth to us as a gift. The Apostle Paul tells all Christians, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Because God loves believers, Christians, people who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves them and, because He is in control of every detail, He makes everything work together according to His wonderful plan. Do you believe that all things work for your good when things go wrong and you have tears in your eyes? When something you thought only happened to others happens to you? Do you believe that everything works for your good when your heart is hurt by disappointment and you don't know how anyone can help, advise, or even understand you? Do you believe that everything is working for your good? As Christians, we can be sure that when our faith is being severely tested, all things work together for our good. God is faithful. Some may ask, can't Satan disrupt God's plans? God has control even over Satan. If you have read the book of Job, you will see that Satan cannot act without God's permission. Often, we are motivated and happy while things are going well, and we make great progress. In the midst of this, storms of sins, problems, and trials arise that we did not anticipate. Because, if we are honest, we do not know what the future holds. A sudden illness, a breakup, the loss of a job. It is easy to feel discouraged and hopeless. But remember, God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 verse 19 says that God does not speak, promises that he will not fulfill. God's ways are not our ways. We think naturally, but God is supernatural. He has answers to our problems that we could never imagine. God would never allow us to face these storms if they would prevent us from reaching our destiny and purpose. We may question God and ask why he allowed the storms in our lives to be so severe that we lose faith and hope but I want you to remember that it is all part of the process. The good news is that God is in control of the winds, the waves, and the storm. He controls what tries to keep you from reaching your dreams and purpose. God only needs to change the winds, and instead of holding you back, they will push you forward. The storms may seem destined to harm you, but God will turn them to your advantage. God is still saying that you will get there. He is still on the throne, fighting your battles behind the scenes and bringing the right people together. What God has promised you will still come to pass. Now, I have a question for you. Will you trust God when you see no signs of improvement? Will you stay in faith when you hear those voices saying it will never work? I want you to remember this. You cannot be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by what you know, and what you know is God's word. Do not let the storm make you lose faith in what God has promised. I am the Alpha and the Omega. This means He is the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty God. God is Almighty. Our minds cannot fully comprehend this term. When we look at creation, we get a small glimpse of what it means to be Almighty. Our human minds cannot grasp the magnitude of God. And honestly, if we could fully understand God, He would not be God. You cannot fit an infinite God into a finite mind. Isaiah 66 verse 1 says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Not even heaven can contain God. How can we think our minds can comprehend him? No human can describe what he is like. But scripture rightly tells us that God is spirit. Contemplating his glory and power over heaven and earth, he sits on his throne in heaven, where the saints, the 24 elders, and the angels bow before him in worship. God, in his fullness and power, created the whole world. He existed before the creation of the world. Genesis 1 verse 2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, 
and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. This passage clearly indicates that God existed before the world began. Therefore, He is the Almighty who no one can question. Let us examine five great lessons about God. God is Spirit. John 4 says, God is Spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The level of your operations in the spiritual realm depends solely on your understanding of God as Spirit. We cannot approach His presence without our spirit being aligned with the Spirit of God. God is not just our Creator. He is Spirit, and anyone who desires to operate in a divine dimension must be spiritual, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Those who live in the flesh cannot please God. The relationship between man and God is spiritual, so the spirit of man must be renewed. Worship means absolute surrender as a result of an encounter with God. Worship is not just the songs we sing. It goes beyond that. There are different ways to worship God. We can give offerings, dance, clap, sow seeds, among other acts. But the best way to worship God is by giving our lives to Him. We cannot present ourselves before Him in a carnal manner and expect spiritual results. Only those who walk in the Spirit can operate in the spiritual with power and vigor. God is love. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. The word love means to give, sacrifice, and serve humanity. God loved the world so much that He sent His only Son to reconcile us with Christ. From the beginning, man strayed. Our minds cannot fully comprehend God's love for us. He knows everything about you, knows when you sit and when you rise. He knows each one of your thoughts even before. Think them. You will never surprise God. He knows what you will do before you even act. He knows all your desires and what is in your heart. God sent His only Son for you, knowing that He would sacrifice Himself and die for you. He did all this to save you, so that you could have the opportunity to have eternal life with Him. When the world was lost and desperately needed a Savior, if our greatest need had been knowledge, He would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, He would have sent a scientist. And if our greatest need had been money, He would have sent an economist. But because our greatest need was forgiveness, He sent a Savior. He loves you, but do you love Him? When you were lost, He found you. When you were broken, He fixed you. When you cried, He comforted you. You have no idea how much you mean to God. He only wants the best for you. You are precious to Him. God would never want to harm you, yet you hurt Him. You know He hates sin, yet you still commit sins. Do is run to the darkness. You choose to love a person more than God, and when they hurt you, it is God who heals you. When they lie to you, it is God who holds the truth. And when they abandon you, it is God who is always by your side. God is indescribable. No human being can truly describe what He is like. The beauty and greatness of God are incomparable. 1 Kings 8 verse 27 says, But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. We owe God true worship and praise. Scripture warns us about not showing our deep gratitude for His creation, His actions, and His supremacy. The Bible speaks of God's hands to help us understand His great power. Sometimes, it speaks of God's mouth to help us understand that He speaks. And it refers to the eyes of the Lord to help us understand that nothing happens outside His reach and vision. God sees everything everywhere at all times. No man has seen God and lived. Our bodies could not withstand His glory and power. He is the great Creator, the great God. God is everywhere. Jeremiah 23 verse 24 says, Do I not fill heaven and earth? declares the Lord. God is everywhere at all times. We cannot comprehend such a God. God is holy in His. God gave us His laws with our best interest in mind, and what He receives from us is disobedience. And then, when something goes wrong, we blame Him. If only we listened to Him, if only we followed His word, if only we obeyed His commandments, much pain could be avoided, many tears would not need to be shed. If only we listened to Him, God would never lead you astray. God is not trying to harm you. How could He, when He sent His only Son to save you? 
God lights up our life, but all we, words, holiness is mentioned numerous times because it is the only criterion for seeing him as he truly is. Anyone who wants to draw near to God must have a pure and sincere heart, without any blemish. God's eyes cannot behold iniquities. One of the reasons prayers go unanswered is sin. God requires clean hearts so we can be in His presence. Holiness is the sure path to see heaven. God is not pleased to see His children ensnared by evil tactics. Psalm 24 verses 3 to 4 says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. God is powerful and majestic. The supremacy and majesty of God cannot be described. He holds all power in His hands. No matter how powerful a man or spirit is, they are still limited compared to God. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not human that He should lie, not a human being that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? God is never weak. His power never fails or wavers. He does not need time to gather resources, does not answer to any man or spirit, and is supreme. He performs wonders and makes His name praised among all nations. By His name, demons bow and call Him Almighty God. No one can be compared to Him. With His power, He holds the whole world in His hands, demonstrating how powerful He is. The sovereignty and supremacy of God clearly indicate that no one can be compared to Him. His creation speaks for Him, and therefore, no man should take any glory. All glory must be attributed to God. For who He is, He deserves to be worshipped. But there is something wonderful about God. His personal spirit can be known. You can become His friend. He had friends in the past. We see in the Bible that people became friends with God, and He became their friend. Open your heart to Him, and He will become your friend. Obey His laws, and He will be your friend. Trust Him with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, and He will become your friend. The Presence of God Genesis 3 verse 8 says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. From the beginning, God always took pleasure in revealing Himself to man. We see this in the Garden of Eden, as He visited Adam and Eve in the evening to have fellowship with them. This continued until they sinned, and God expelled them from His presence. God is holy, and sin cannot stand before Him. Sin separated humanity from God. Despite this, man's sin did not stop God from reaching out to men. God continued to reveal Himself in various ways until Jesus Christ came. Every time God revealed Himself and His presence manifested, it was utterly terrifying. When God appeared to Abraham, He appeared as a smoking furnace moving through the air. Genesis 15 verses 17 to 18 says, When the sun had set and, to experience the depth of His love and the reality of His sovereignty over every aspect of our lives. This journey is not always easy. There will be moments of doubt and periods of trial. However, God's promise to always be with us, to never leave us nor forsake us, gives us the strength to face every challenge. At every step of the way, we can see God's hand at work, shaping our lives to reflect His glory and purpose. God's greatness is not only measured by the vast galaxies He created or the miracles we see in the Bible. It is manifested in His constant and faithful love for us, in His grace that sustains us, and in His promise to never leave us alone. In this reality, we find our greatest hope and comfort, knowing that the God of the universe is personally interested in each one of us. As we walk through life facing its ups and downs, we can hold on to the truth of God's greatness. We can rest in the security of His love and power, knowing that nothing is beyond His control. In every moment, God is with us, working for our good, guiding us toward a future full of hope. And in this knowledge, we find the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that can only come from knowing the truly great God.